Hello Booktube! Today on my 2023 library tour, I am continuing with this bookshelf here. There are two um, shelves left, and these two shelves are part of the larger history wall. So let's get going. First up is uh, Winter King, Henry VII and the Dawn of Tudor England by Thomas Penn. This is a really good um, look at the reign of Henry VII and the early years of Henry VIII's reign. This is Tombstone, The Great Chinese Famine, 1958-1962, by Yang Jixing, translated by Stacey Mosher and Guo Jian. Uh, this is a history of the uh, famine that uh, afflicted China in the late 50s and early 60s. And this is a magisterial, amazing work of history. Um, and horrifying. Uh, what happened during that famine was horrifying, and this book brilliantly and horrifically catalogs it. Um, and the Chinese version is much larger and looks at uh, much more of uh, the problem, many more provinces than this book gets to, but it is brilliant. Next is a book that I have yet to get to. Um, the Restless Kings, Henry II, His Sons, and the Wars for the Plantagenet Crown by Nick Barat. I'm thinking about reading this for um, Historathon. Yeah, it's been bookmarked. So I'm thinking I'll get try to get to this at some point during Historathon. This is The Husband Hunters, American heiresses who married into the British aristocracy by Anne de Courcy. This is an interesting um, look at this phenomenon um, of um, American, wealthy American women um, who are nouveau riche, who are trying to break into not only the European aristocracy, but also the New York aristocracy, um, the wealthy elite of New York in the 19th century was composed of a limited number of families, and those families were quite insular. So ambitious, wealthy women who wanted to get into those elite social circles, the best way for them to advance was by marrying their daughters to uh, European aristocrats and thereby gaining titles for their daughters and being the mother-in-law of a count or an earl or a duke. Well, you can't really close your doors to them now, can you? So this is a very fascinating look at that, and um, I quite liked it, although I did have some issues with it. There were some things that um, were a bit bizarre, if I remember correctly. This is the amazing Black Wave of Saudi Arabia, Iran, and the 40-Year Rivalry that Unraveled Culture, Religion, and Collective Memory in the Middle East by Kim Gaddis. This is a brilliant book. I loved it. Um, I read it shortly after it came out uh, from the library and uh, made sure to pre-order it when I saw it coming out in paperback. Next is an amazing biography. This is The Black Prince of Florence, The Spectacular Life and Treacherous World of Alessandro de' Medici by Catherine Fletcher. 
This is a wonderful biography. I love it. And sticking with biographies, this is a biography of Alessandro de' Medici's half-sister, Catherine de' Medici. This is Catherine de' Medici, Renaissance Queen of France by Leone Frida, which I remember quite liking. It's been a while since I've read it, but I think I liked it. I mean, I liked it enough to want to have it in my collection. Although I do need to get that Goodwill sticker off of it at some point. Maybe when I do a uh, rearrangement of my history wall. Which is currently how it is. It's largely how I bought the books. Um, but I kind of want to reorganize it thematically at some point. But anyway, so this is The Triumph of the Moon, A History of Modern Pagan Witchcraft by Ronald Hutton. We saw him earlier, um, well, actually on Friday with The Witch. So this is an earlier book of his. Um, in this book, he looks at the history of Wicca. And he traces Wicca's history to the 19th century and then explores Wicca's history in the 20th century. And it is amazing. I really enjoyed this book immensely. A book that I have some unfinished business with is Game of Queens, The Women Who Made 16th Century Europe by Sarah Christwood. Um, so this is a short little history of the 16th century, particularly the early 16th century. Um, and it focuses on um, women who were in positions of power as either um, regents or governors or, in a few cases, uh, Queen's Regnant. Um, I thought the style is was a bit unimpressive, um, but I might come back to it because it is a fascinating subject, although perhaps maybe uh, another book might have better writing. Now, this is a book that I have not yet read yet. It is Unworthy Republic, The Dispossession of Native Americans and the Road to Indian Territory by Claudio Sant. Next is um, 1177 B.C., the Year Civilization Collapsed by Eric H. Klein. Uh, this is a history of the late Bronze Age, and especially um, looking at the um, causes of the late Bronze Age collapse, uh, which Klein points to uh, climatic changes that sort of snowballed into other effects as well. And so the book is part history, part archaeology, part um, sort of a contemporary um, exploration of how contemporary archaeologists have sort of theorized about what happened in and around 1177 BC. And it's pretty good. Um, I rather like Kleins' work. So I read another book of his, and I have another one further on in the collection. I need to put these books a little bit, not to tightly pack. Anyway, this is The Golden Rhinoceros, Histories of the African Middle Ages by Francois Javier Favelle, uh, translated by Troy Tice. So this is a fascinating um, exploration of medieval Africa. I really enjoyed it when I read it about two years ago, but I really enjoyed it. Um, it's quite fascinating. Uh, next is a book that I have not yet gotten to, but I really, am, really should get to it sooner rather than later. 
This is the history of Crete by Chris Morey. Love that cover. Next is a book that I am fairly fond of. It's fairly interesting. It's Lords of the Sea, a history of the Barbary Corsairs by Alan G. Jameson. So this is a history of um, the pirate regimes that um, occupied um, the North African coast, um, Algiers, Tunis, um, Tripoli, that were nominally part of the Ottoman Empire, but um, were effectively given free reign to um, target um, European shipping in the um, for centuries. But it's a very fascinating book. A uh, book that I, I'm not as fond of is Republics of the New World, the Revolutionary Political Experiment in 19th Century Latin America by Hilda Sabato. This is a very dense academic uh, look at um, Latin American politics or certain aspects of Latin American politics that um, went over my head. that I have unfinished business with. This is The Woman Who Would Be King, Hatshepsut's Rise to Power in Ancient Egypt by Kara Cooney. So this is a biography of Hatshepsut. And I'm not fond of it. Um, I'm not particularly fond of Kara Cooney's writing style. Um, I also had um, read her more recent book, um, When Women Ruled the World. And I didn't particularly get on with that one either. Um, like her style um, doesn't quite sit right with me. And um, she engages in some of um, sort of a narrative techniques that um, in history I'm not particularly fond of. Um, so, yeah. But I might come back to this because I do really want a biography of Hachette's foot. Um, just don't know necessarily if this one will ultimately be the one. Um, I mean, there's always a chat shot for bell redemption. Anyway, next is Knossos and the Prophets of Modernism by Kathy Gear. This is an amazing uh, look at how the Minoans were constructed by historians and archaeologists. And what I mean by that is that um, we know the Minoans existed, but what? But basically, almost everything about them, in one shape, way, shape, or form, is a modern construct um, based more on the concerns of the present for the historian or archaeologist than what was perhaps maybe more true for the Minoans, if you understand what I'm saying. So, yeah. So it's a very complicated but fascinating book. I really enjoyed reading it. Another book I really enjoyed reading, although perhaps... I have one criticism of it, and that is, so this book is The Fall of the Ottomans, The Great War in the Middle East, 1914 to 1920 by Eugene Rogan. So this is a look at the uh, fall of the Ottoman Empire, and primarily through uh, the Ottoman Empire's experiences in World War One. Uh, and I really enjoyed the book, but my issue with it is that um, Rogan focuses a little too much on the British and not enough on the Ottomans. Next is a fascinating uh, book, um, Building an American Empire, The Era of Territorial and Political Expansion by Paul Freimer. This book looks at how 
um, the United States managed its expansion um, gradually over time. How the United States was, was at points solicitous of um, the people's already, the Native Americans already living in certain territories and gradually as um, unofficial or official um, white settlement began to encroach and began to crowd out the Native Americans who were living there, how the U.S. sort of turned more adversarial um, and how this sort of worked uh, with um, sort of the annexation of Texas, the colonization and annexation of Texas, and how it took decades after um, New Mexico and Arizona were annexed to the United States to become states because of um, New Mexico and Arizona's initial mostly um, Hispanic population. So yeah, this was a very fascinating book. Um, another very fascinating book um, is The End of American Childhood, A History of Parenting from Life on the Frontier to the Men as Child by Paula S. Vest. This is a wonderful look at American childhood. I really enjoyed this book immensely. And one of my favorite books from that I read in 2021 is Sunny Days, The Children's Television Revolution That Changed America by David Camp. This is a history of um, children's television, particularly a children's educational television that um, was in like the late 60s and through the 70s. And it basically looks at how during this period, um, children's television became more educational, or at least these specific programs did. Um, Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, um, Schoolhouse Rock, uh, The Electric Company, uh, Zoom, I think it's also mentioned, and a few uh, local access programs. And how with the 80s, children's television became reverted back to what it was originally, which was glorified toy commercials. But anyway, this was an amazing book. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Next is a book that I have not gotten around to yet. And that is The Deviant's War, The Homosexual versus the United States of America by Eric Cervini. So this is a micro history of an astronomer named Frank Kamini, who uh, was fired from his position because he was a homosexual and who uh, tried to sue the U.S. government to get his job back. And when he was defeated in court, um, went on to found uh, the Medicine Society, an early gay rights organization. Next is a book that I haven't gotten to yet, which I really need to. And that is Iron Kingdom. The Rise and Downfall of Prussia, 1600 to 1947, by Christopher Clark. Cannot wait to get to this, and I've had it for a few years now, so I really need to get to it. Next is the very interesting um, Empires of the Week. The Real Story of European Expansion and the Creation of the New World Order by J.C. Sharman. So this book looks at the early years of um, colonial expansion in which, excepting for the Americas, um, and even there, most European uh, sort of um, traders and would-be uh, colonizers were faced with a more robust um, responses um, around the world, namely in like Africa and in the Middle East with the Ottomans and in Asia with the uh, Chinese and Japanese and also the Indians and how it took centuries for basically the, the tide to turn, if you will. 
Yeah. It was a fascinating book. Uh, next is The Wonderful Heartbeat of Wounded Knee, Native America from 1890 to the Present by David Truer. Uh, this is a look at um, Native Americans um, over the past century plus, and it is fairly fascinating. Um, I do need to reread it. It's been far too long since I read it. Next is a wonderful biography. Uh, Victoria the Queen, an intimate biography of the woman who ruled an empire by Julia Baird. I really enjoyed this biography of Victoria. It was Queen Victoria. It was amazing. Next is a book that I have yet to get to. It's another big biography. It is Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. This is one of the sources for the musical Hamilton. And Ron Chernow is a rather famous biography, biographer who has written on like, um, Washington and Grant, which we will see later on in this um, tour. I have mean to get to this one at some point. Another book that I need to get to is Unruly Waters, How Mountain Rivers and Monsoons Have Shaped South Asia's History by Sunil Amrith. Next is uh, Pantheon, A New History of Roman Religion by Georg Rupka. Let's see if it is translated. Translated by M.B. Richardson. So I need to get to this. I'm really looking forward to it. Because I do have a deep interest in uh, Greek and Roman mythology and religion. Although more the mythology. And particularly more Greek mythology. So the last two books on this shelf are ones that I don't know necessarily if I have unfinished business with. First is In the Land of a Thousand Gods, A History of Asia Minor and the Ancient World by Christian Merrick with uh, Peter Fry and translated by Stephen Rendell. So this is a massive um, history of Anatolia from prehistory through uh, Rome, uh, Roman occupation, or part of the Roman Empire. You get what I'm saying. And it's dense, it's overly academic, but yeah, and I didn't quite get on with it, but I would like to because I do have a sweet tooth for the hit types. And finally, on the shelf, um, Empire's Crossroads, A New History of the Caribbean by Kara Gibson, which I didn't quite get on with when I read it last year, but I might give it another go of Bell Redemption at some point. And in book two, I am being summoned, so until I see you tomorrow, oh, with uh, another part of this tour and uh, probably a book tag. And so, I'm sorry. So anyway, I'm being rushed, so I will see you tomorrow. So until then, thank you, have a great afternoon, and stay safe.